Hello all, this is Surya Sabrinath, working as an assistant professor in the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences from Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research. I am handling the courses of U18 BAC 761 Soil and Applied Microbiology for the Department Agricultural Biotechnology. So in this class, we are going to discuss to you about mycorrhizae and its types, then vesicular, herbicular, mycorrhizal from home. So first we go with the mycorrhizae. So what does it mean by mycorrhizae? The term mycorrhizae was taken from Greek language that means fungus root. It was coined by Frank in 1885. The mycorrhizae, myco means fungi, rhizae means root. So it is a mutualistic association between fungal mycelia and plant roots. VAM. VAM is an endotrophic that means live inside mycorrhizae formed by aseptated phycomycetes fungi. Aseptated means fungi cannot divide by cross -water. BAM helps in plants for nutrient transfer, mainly of phosphorus, zinc, and sulfur. And also, it protected plant root from pathogen and a nematode infection. Guys, see this picture. So, in this picture, it is a photograph of mycorrhizal association in plant root. Next, we are going to discuss about what are all the different groups of mycorrhizae. The different groups are ectomycorrhizae and endomycorrhizae. So first, what is ectomycorrhizae? Ectomycorrhizae, fungus completely encloses each feeder root in a sleek or mantle of hyphae. The hyphae penetrate only between the cells of the root cortex, that is intracellular association, or comes under deciduomycotina and ascomycotina. Example, Amanita, Suilis, Lacaria, Lacata. Next one is Endomycorrhizae. Endomycorrhizae means these are the fungus does not form external sheath but lives within the cells of the root. It is intracellular and establishes direct connections between the cells of the root and surrounding soil. Example is Armillaria forms and Xerotus. So now come to ectomycorrhizae. So ectomycorrhizae that we already discussed, it lives only outside of the cell. So it forms mainly with the conifers and ox. See, this is the structure of ectomycorrhizae. Here, xylem is present. We are all well known. The xylem that is helps to water transport in plants, then epidermis layer, then cortex and articulate, and fungal sheath. So fungal sheath that will protect the fungus, fungal root. So net. what is maybe net? So net is the fungal penetrate the root between cortex tissue and act as a storage and a transport organ of phosphorus. So ectomycorrhizae, there is no VAM. So because uh, for uh, endomycorrhizae, VAM will act as a storage and a uh, transport organ, vesicles and vesicles. But here, harticnet will serve as the storage and the transport organ of P. So some of the beneficial role of harticnet there. So what is that? So first one is, it protects from pathogen. Second one is, it produces endospores. There is a reproductive structure. Okay. Then it produces polysaccharide that is called glomerulin. Then endomycorrhizae. So endomycorrhizae exchange mechanism as an inside of the root and the hyphae ex extend outside of the root. Endomycorrhizae form mostly within the green leafy plants and the most commercially produced plants. So simply we have to say, endo means fungal will be present inside the root. Ecto means fungal will be present outside the root. Example, most vegetables, grasses, flowers, fruit, trees, and ornamentals. So this is the structure of endomycorrhizae. So cortex region and uh, the root has vesicles and abdesicles is present and the endodermis is present and epidermis layer uh, and climatospores. So uh, this is the internal structure. So the difference between ecto and endomycorrhizae, you see the difference between the cell structure of ectomycorrhizae and endomycorrhizae. So here hyphae do not penetrate our root cells. So here hyphae penetrate to the root cells. So here hartignet is present, here hartignet is absent. Then the types of endomycorrhizae. First one is uh, ericoid mycorrhizae. The ericoid mycorrhizae, it was found in inhospitable environments, particularly acidic environment. The fungi involved in the symbiotic relationship are ascomycota. 
it despite the harsh condition the mycorrhiza are still able to take up nitrogen and phosphorus of the host plant in also helps to acquisition of iron manganese and aluminum ions which are often present in highly available forms in acidic soils next one orchid mycorrhiza at some point in their life cycle all the orchids through a period of time where they are not photosynthetic during this time the orchid cannot perform photosynthesis or manufacture its own carbohydrate so it must rely upon mycorrhizal fungi to provide with nutrients so generally orchid is not photosynthetic when the orchid is the seedling stage of its life next one is abutoid mycorrhizae so abutoid mycorrhizae are found in plant genera such as arctostaphylos and abutus so the fungi that form abutoid mycorrhizae relationships are residual mycetes that is a club fungus so it associates fungal sheath or mantle covers the root of the host plant similar to the structure of ectomycorrhizal associations the next one is monotropoid mycorrhizae monotropoid mycorrhizae throughout to be part of the arbutoid mycorrhizae group while arbutoid mycorrhizae hyphae penetrate and form extensive structures within the cells of the host plant monotropoid mycorrhizae do not penetrate the cell walls of host plant they do not produced any chlorophyll so it cannot do photosynthesis without chlorophyll the plant or of any fungus will not do photosynthesis chlorophyll is the pigment it is initiator of photosynthesis next one vesicular arbuscular mycorrhizae so regarding to this topic so regarding to this uh, types of mycorrhizae vesicular arbuscular mycorrhizae will be the most beneficial role for plant and also it give lot of economy income to the farmers they have to produce the vam in their home condition itself so vesicular arbuscular mycorrhizae so vam fungi are the group of symbiotic endotrophic mycorrhizal fungi found in the roots of higher plants so they are included in the family that is endogonaceae of zygomycetes vam fungi infects a plant root and forms vesicles and arbuscles in the root cortex and permanent mantle of the hyphae on the root surface i already said that the endomycorrhizae the fungal hyphae will penetrate into the cortex and it will be forms vesicles and arbuscles vesicles are bulb like structure that is helps to storage the nutrients arbuscles are finger like structure that is used to transport the nutrients so vam fungi in nowadays it is called as arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi so it will be renamed okay so these vesicles are large bulb like structure used for storage of food materials and the arbuscles are modified from hyphae as coiled or densely branched finger like structure like haustoria and they are involved in interchange of materials like nutrients between plants and fungus vam founds in many crop plants like rice maize potato soybean cotton tobacco sugarcane tomato rubber strawberry coffee tea cocoa peas apples and papaya so guys see the structure i already shown this is the external hyphae epidermis layer at the bottom that is endodermis layer vesicle arbuscle and the casparian strips these are present so genera of vam fungi so gredman and trap have recognized five genera of vam fungi based on spore morphology they are first one is glomus glomus is the first genera so the chlamydospores with a thick wall so here 
what we discussed means guys you see this so here that chlamydospore wall how it is attached based on the genera will be classified okay so if it is thick walled that is called glomus so what is gigaspora so gigaspora next gigaspora is the next classes before that the species of uh, glomus that is glomus microcarpus and glomus mosse etc second one is gigaspora the stalk of the chlamydospore that is bulbous stalk. So simply we have to say chlamydospores with bulbous stalk. Example, the species that is Gigaspora nigra. The third one is Acalaspora. Acalaspora that means chlamydospores are sessile. Sessile means there is no stalk which should be attached to the epidermis layer. The example is Acalaspora scorbit cutula. Next one is sclerocyst. Sclerocyst, the chlamydospores are thick walled example sclerocyst clavispora then endogen the zygospores inside this porocarp that one that is called endogen here there is no any role for chlamydospores here the zygospores is uh, will be play a role inside in, instead of chlamydospores example is endogen incresta next one morphology of worm. so worm have three distinct regions. First one is external hyphae, herbicicles, vesicles. So external hyphae, it is a substrate. Okay, it is not divided by, the, the body of the fungi will not divided by cross walls. And also it dimorphic, they have a dual morphology characters and is thick wall with it and closely oppressed on the root surface. At the point of contact with the plant root, it bears a pressurium. Then an herbicicles, it is the Dynamically branched brush like hostorium produced at the tip of fungal hyphae in cortical cells. It gets digested as the host cell matures. Then, vesicle, it is the spherical or oval, thick shaped uh, or thick walled structure produced at the tip of hyphae in the intracellular space. It is rich in fat droplets and hence serve as the storage organs. The spore germinates into the hyphae called permanent hyphae on the root surface. This hyphae is aseptate and thick wall. Thin walled short lived hyphae arises from the permanent hyphae and penetrate root hairs or epidermis to reach the cortex. Is, sorry, in the cortex, they grow through the intercellular spaces between the cells. Tip of these hyphae enter the cells and form herbicicles and vesicles. Some other thin walled hyphae come out of the plant root and produces spores that is called Chlamydospores. We already discussed how that uh, VAM will have five genera based on that chlamydospores. The next one, importance of VAM fungi. I already said that the why I selected the VAM fungi because it is a beneficial role to the plants and also it gives employable opportunities to the farmers. So VAM fungi helps in plant to intake more amount of zinc, sulfur, uh, phosphorus, uh, copper, potash, iron, magnesium, and boron from the soil. So, VAM fungal interactions and infections increase the growth rate in plants. Example, citrus, maize, wheat, barley, etc. So, VAM fungal infection increases the absorption of water by plant from the soil by doubt provides. So, VAM fungal infection increases the concentration of cytokinin and chlorophyll in plants. So, it reduces the sensitivity of crop plants towards high level of the salt and heavy metals in the soil. And it improves the hardiness of uh, transplanted stalks by serving as extra root hairs, example, pine. BAM provides resistance to plant against various soil borne plant pathogens causes root diseases. So in fumigated soil, plants show stunted growth. 
Vamp fungal infection reduces the stunning of plant insect soils. And Vamp fungal infection increases the yield in crop like potato, maize, barley, etc. Potato crop highly infected by nematodes. So this VAM will be prevent uh, the crop from nematode and it gives more yield. When the infected plants is starving for food, VAM gives the plants its own food and protect the plant. Then examination of VAM. So now we have to study what is the morphological characters of VAM and what are the importance of VAM for plants. Now we have to know how to examination of them? There are two types of them. First one is we have to examine uh, the root infection, the home percentage of root infections of them, and we will be examining the uh, spores from soil by wet sieving and decanting method. So first we go with the one by one. So examination from the root. So uh, it is a root clearing and staining technique. The first step is collect the representative root samples from growing plant, growing root of plants. Uh, that uh, you have to preferably we have to prefer the thin roots and wash gently with running tap water to remove adhering soil particles. So what is next? So after you remove the uh, adhering soil particles, you cut the root into one centimeter pieces and uh, transfer to the boiling troops. Okay, so and add 10 percentage of KOH solution till the root are immersed. So pluck the tube with cotton and cover it with the paper and heat at 90 degrees Celsius for one hour. So alternately cook the samples in the help of autoclay in uh, at the temperature 100 to 120 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. So we are well known. Autoclave is the moist heat sterilizing instrument. Okay, it was uh, introduced by Charles Chamberland. So what, one more information, autoclave is the big size of the cooker. Okay. So care should be taken to avoid smashing of root. Delicate roots can be heated for a short time with care. This boiling with the KOH leads to clearing of root contents. Wash the roots till no brown color appear in washed water. If uh, the washing should not be done properly or still uh, the brown color will be there means you should be go for bleaching okay so bleaching is necessary for heavily pigmented root material which is not clearly adequately in KOH alone so immerse the root in alkaline h2o2 solution at room temperature for 10 minutes to an hour so till the roots are bleached alkaline h2o2 is prepared by adding 3 ml of NH4OH, 30 ml of 10 percentage H2O2 to 567 ml uh, to ml of tap water. Okay, so it will make it around, uh, I think, uh, 570 plus 30, that is uh, 600 ml. Wash the root thoroughly in water to remove all H2O2. So after bleaching is done, you should be due for acidification. So important thing, if KOH will not disappear, so that you do bleaching. Okay, if it is disappear, you will directly come with acidification. So in this acidification, immerse the root with the two percentage hydrochloric acid and retain for three to five minutes and decant. So after acidification, should not wash the root in water since the strain requires an acidic medium for the reason, the reaction. So after acidification is done, we should do the staining and de-staining. So what is staining? Staining means it is an artificial coloring agent that is helps to identification of the microorganism. De-staining means it, it helps to remove of excess stain that is called de-staining. For VAM, the staining should be done with the equal volume of 0.05 percentage tripan blue stain. So after you should immerse with the tripan blue stain, you will keep the uh, root under the autoclave for 10 minutes to at 120 degrees Celsius or heat at 90 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes are left unheated for several hours. After heating, you should be uh, unheating. So it should be being in the condition for several hours. Then if the roots are stained excess, so immerse the root in lactophenol for de-staining. So lactophenol is a de-staining agent. 
okay for uh, trypanthrum solution so guys see this is this is the picture so first you should be after uh, you should uh, do all this procedure like uh, root clearing uh, bleaching acidification staining and destaining you should mount the root on the slides okay it should be like this and uh, you should be uh, add some mounted gel then you should be uh, cover with the permanent slide so that is cover slip then you make this as a permanent slide and you should be examine the slide under the microscope guys see this so in this picture the first one you should see the possible uh, intersects so what we have to be visible so while we are making that uh, permanent slide you should be sectioned the uh, good quality of a specimen okay and also we see the morphological characters clearly so hyphae and vesicles this is a hyphae and vesicles you have to see then second section you should see the hyphae only third one is herpesicles are found and root only so you should be sectioned like this and you should be uh, keep it as a permanent slide okay the next you should do the uh, wet sieving and decanting method okay guys this is the picture so first you should collect the root okay and you take the sieves okay the size is around uh, 750 mm okay Uh, and 180 90 45 mm you should be arranged it as a de descending order so first uh, you have to uh, take 100 g of soil and you should be mix it thoroughly then you should be uh, uh, sieving the soil see uh, sieving should be done so and you should collect uh, the last uh, last sieve that is 45 micrometer then you should be take the spores and you should be with the petri plate and you should be examine under stereo zoom microscope only stereo zoom microscope it helps to uh, examine the vamp spores okay so if we examined by this uh, the spores will be visible and you have to detected with uh, needle and the, if the spore is present it should be oocyst out okay that we discuss the procedure so recover of am fungal spores from soil by wet teak wet sieving and decanting technique so take 100 g of soil in 1 liter beaker For after removing stones and other bigger sized derbies etc so pour 1 liter of uh, water and stir well with the glass rod so as to detach spores from soil particles so allow the soil particles to settle down for few seconds so transfer the water to the sieves arranged in descending order so 750 180 90 and 45 microns again pour water in the beaker stir well and allow to settle for seconds and transfer it into sieve arrangements repeat the process for 4 to 5 times till the suspension is become clear so collect the sieves uh, from each sieve using fine getting to water through sequence for a bottle in a small beaker for taking total count pass the sieving again through the fine sieves 45 microns collect the sieving again in a beaker from a fine sieve and make up to 10 ml transfer to a volume 1 ml of the sieving into a gridded petri plate so gridded means it should be marked some like graphical sorry uh, graph okay and a petri plate and observe the plate under the stereo zoom microscope so why the what is the advantage by sieving so if sieving by different size of sieves so if the microbes that size is around 750 it is uh, eliminated in the 750 ml sieve then after you should uh, again it comes to the 180 micron sieve the size is about 180 plus that it should be eliminated followed by the 90 plus is eliminated in 90 micron sieve and 45 about eliminated in 45 micron sieve so the size of the vam it's it should be below than 45 micron so that uh, uh, sorry it should be above than 45 micron so that we should get the sieve of 45 micron size okay so scan the grids one by one and looking the spores so count the number of spores so chlamydia spores will look bigger and thick walled if it is crushed with the needle the fatty substances will be ooze out from the spores so guys see this uh, this is the stereo zoom microscopic observation of seeing the graph okay guys now we enter uh, about the morph protection of vam or am fungi okay so first herbicular mycorrhizae cannot be produced in laboratory using any artificial media so here it is the medium is soil and vermiculite okay 
so uh, it is obligate symbiont in nature it can colonize in maize and grass so we have to see the worm spores in maize crop so for mass production the, we have to select maize crop because uh, it is an adventitious root and also it produces more spores spore is the very very important thing okay so nowadays in foreign countries the worm spores are having high market demand also okay so maize plant is used as a host plant for mass production of am fungi Uh, vermiculite is the best carrier material so what is the carrier material for other bio inoculants such as lignite uh, peat soil talcum powder etc but here vermiculite is the best carrier material for production of am fungi so mother culture mother culture can be produced from efficient spores using funnel techniques as well as multiplication in small sized plots so 3 to 4 cycle will be made for developing the good mother culture So that means you have to do it three to four times. Okay, mother culture should be have hundred percent root colonization and the minimum of eight to ten spores per gram of the inoculum. Okay, mother culture can be should be maintained in maize roots continuously. So these are all the some of the best quality attributes about mother culture. Okay, then method of production of worm. So form a trench of uh, three. Three meter into one meter into zero point three meter, and line with black polythene sheet to use to use this as a plant growth term. Mix five hundred kg of vermiculite and fifty kg of sterilized soil, and pack in the trench up to height of twenty centimeter. Spread a ten kg of AM inoculum mother culture two to five uh, centimeter below the surface of vermiculite. Sow surface sterilized maize seeds uh, with five percent sodium hypochlorite for two minutes. At the time of sowing, apply twenty gram urea, twenty gram superphosphate, ten gram of potash. So regularly water the plants, grow the plants for sixty days. so after the 60th day cut all the roots and mix with the vermiculite in trench inoculum produced consist of vermiculite spore species of type a and infected roots so within 60 days 55 kg of am inoculum could be prepared from 1 square meter area so this inoculum will be sufficient to treat 550 meter square nursery or having 11000 seedlings so guys please see this picture so in this picture the was, uh, mass production of worm inside the brick lined tank and another one is uh, mass production of worm inside the cement tank okay you should be uh, mass production in the field level itself but the polythene sheet you have to uh, maintain with uh, be careful and make the holes for uh, easily uh, pull out and collecting the worm roots okay so field application so field application worm fungal inoculant is diluted with water and mixed with the seeds to make pellet of inoculant on them the seeds are uh, then shown in main field as usual in another method the inoculant is spread uniformly all over the field before plowing and the crops are transplanted or seeds sowed in that field as usual next one is nursery application of worm so 100 g inoculum is sufficient for 1 meter square area the inoculant should be applied at 2 to 3 cm below the soil at the time of sowing the seeds cutting should be sown uh, planted uh, above the am inoculum so for nursery so seed also for uh, uh, trees we should have the seed and also cuttings of the root so 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 that you have to use this worm also then for polythene bag rice seeds for forest trees and the plantation crops such as coffee and tree okay so uh, about 10 g of inoculum is sufficient for each plant rice in poly bags and mix 10 kg of uh, inoculum with 1000 kg of potting mixture and pack the potting mixture in polythene uh, sheets okay and uh, before sowing then for out planting for out planting uh, 20 g of am inoculum is required for seedlings and apply inoculum at that time then uh, time of planting okay the next one is for existing trees for existing trees 50 to 100 g of am inoculum is required for inoculating one tree apply inoculum near the root surface at the time of fertilizer application 
okay these are all the application of uh, vamp to nursery and polythene bag rice resilience for out planting and uh, for existing trees so guys i think in this class we are discussed about mycorrhizae and the types uh, like ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza endomycorrhiza there are another subclasses is there like orchid mycorrhiza arbutoid mycorrhiza monotropoid mycorrhiza and uh, vesicular orbicular mycorrhiza so uh, among the mycorrhiza vesicular orbicular mycorrhiza will play the beneficial role for many plants and also it gives employment opportunities and uh, it make a, uh, to start a small entrepreneurship business for the farmers so uh, basically it it helps the plants against the disease and the nematodes and it helps the plants uh, to supply the phosphorus so available form of phosphorus that is phosphate so nowadays that uh, phosphate deficiency is more in crop so the uh, leaf is become pink in color so the you have to apply this vamp it is eco friendly and it will be uh, use the beneficial uh, way to supply the more amount of phosphorus and it reduces the amount of phosphorus uh, to apply in the field also i hope this lecture might be useful to you if you have any doubt you should contact me so guys thank you guys i will be see you with the another good lecture from the next class thank you